going to face uh, Dwyer with Orlando City from National Team Training Camp, what you saw from him. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's a, he's got a good work ethic. Uh, he's clinical in and around the box. I think he proved that in the, the games he was playing. Um, he works hard. He closes down space as well. Uh, he runs the channel as well. Um, so obviously, he adds a, a new element to their team. And just his his ability as a shooter, how does that affect what you try to do? Is, there, is he particularly better at one thing than another? You know, no, for me, I just try to keep the ball in the back of the net. So right. that, that's, that's always a good goal. That stays the same. <laughs> um, listen, I mean, he, he's a good player. Uh, saw that obviously first time when we were in camp. And uh, thanks, guys. And um, so yeah, he's a good player. We uh, we need to make sure we're aware of of his his uh, his positioning and, and his whereabouts on the field as the, as the game goes on. And watching film of the last game against Orlando City, what did y'all learn that you need to improve upon for this? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think in any game you take some positives, you take some negatives. Uh, there's times, you know, set pieces. Obviously, we need to look at. We need to make sure we're stronger on those for sure. Um, and try not to turn the ball over in, in bad areas. Uh, keep keep possession of the ball, uh, secure the ball. Uh, and then when we have it, move it, move it quicker. Brad, in, in, in your experience, this is kind of off the track a little bit about what what what, is, what has been the, the most heated, intense rivalries uh, soccer rivalries that you you've been uh, party to? Um, I've been fortunate to, fortunate to be part of a few. Obviously, the U.S. Mexico comes to mind. Uh, playing at Villa and playing uh, playing uh, the, you know against Birmingham City in that derby. Uh, that's a that's a big robbery. Um, so, I mean, there's there's big games all around the world, uh, over in Turkey, in Scotland, London, um, everywhere, Milan. How do those games, uh, I guess, describe how, uh, just how those games feel? Uh, I mean, listen, they're filled, they're filled what with... What makes them different? Well, they're filled with passion, of course, and uh, I think you, even more so in those games, uh, you're, you're playing that much more for your city, you're playing for your fans, you're playing uh, for the badge on the shirt. Uh, those games, they come with uh, a certain amount of intensity. They come with a certain amount of passion, um, hatred, if you like. Uh, so you're you're putting all those emotions, uh, and then on top of it, trying to play good soccer. What's been the the, the most intense scene that you've been part of? Intense from the standpoint of I don't know how many get out of here alive. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, probably a few games with the national team. Um, you know, like I said, going down to Azteca, but playing in these, you know, these, these playing these countries in, in our region in Concacaf. Um, you know, when you go down to some of these, the security isn't always the best, and fans uh, somehow find their way, whether it be through a window or or a door or a hallway, or whatever they find their way in and around the locker room. So. Uh, you got to be ready for everything, I guess. So I guess Atlanta, Atlanta doesn't quite rise to that level. I mean, listen, we we just played them, so right. it, it, rivalries aren't just created uh, because you say so. Um, you know, obviously, going down there, uh, getting three points um, in front of uh, an intense crowd with with our supporters um, showing their support for us, it's going to make the Saturday uh, that much more special. You seem to enjoy it. I mean, getting into it. Yeah, I mean, listen. Yeah, so listen. Give and take. These are the games you want to be a part of as a player. You know, they're they're important games, uh, but these are big games. You know, um, so you, you, as a player, these are the games you want to be on the field for. The Bears Packers compared to yeah. Aston Villa, Birmingham. Uh, yeah, I think American sports in general. Uh, Compared to world football, um, I don't know if it if it's on the same level. Uh, just because you have fans mixing, sitting next to each other. You go to a Milan Derby. You go to uh, you go to Turkey. Um, you know the away fans are caged in. You know they're not allowed out of their area and escorted in and out of the stadium, sort of thing. So um, adds a little bit uh, a little bit more intensity to it. Bigger than Georgia, Georgia Tech. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't experienced that yet, so we'll see. <laughs> Is there a goalie in the world that could have stopped Tito's shot? Uh, it's Friday. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, listen, the the strike itself speaks for itself. So. Uh, it was a great finish. Uh, happy that we were on uh, the winning side. So, um, you know, we know he's got that quality. We know he's got that ability to, to put the ball in the back of the net. So it was a great finish. During the intro presser, you talked, or, or Carlos talked about your training regimen and how intense it is. And uh, in your, at your age, you're not old in life terms, but professional soccer-wise, uh, how have you been able to just keep up your high physical level? And how's your 
how has it changed over time, just over your past year or two, maybe than in the past? Um, yeah, I mean, I think when you, as you get older and you, you go through experiences, your training, uh, being in Europe, especially where, you know, because of the national team schedule in the summer, you don't really have an off-season. I think the longest off-season I've had in nine years was, was maybe two or three weeks. Um, so there's not a lot of downtime to let your body rest. So you have to be smart throughout the season. And, and as a goalkeeper, uh, you know, you're, you make your living by jumping on the floor, diving on the floor every day. So uh, you find out, uh, sorry, you find out how many times, uh, you know, what, what you need in a day, uh, when it's too much, when, when you need to push yourself more. And uh, I think that just comes with experience. Is the American schedule different than maybe in your European uh, experiences as far as the training schedule, the amount of time, anything you've noticed so no, far? No, I mean, you, you know, you tend to have a day off during the week at some point, but uh, more or less it's, it's uh, it's pretty similar. Um, you know, obviously the the thing about MLS is the travel. So, being on a plane on a Friday, playing on a Saturday, flying back on a Sunday. Whereas in England, uh, I think we were either on a train or a bus. Uh, very rarely were we on a plane. So, and you were back after the after the game. Um, but because of the country that we live in, uh, flights are necessary. So. And the other red. Yeah, just facing a, a team with two quality strikers like Laren. And, and Dwyer, how does that affect your preparation, or does it change it at all? No, it doesn't. I mean, listen, playing professional sports, so more more times out of not, you're going to face teams with good players, uh, and it's not just going to be one guy. So, um, doesn't change our preparation. Uh, like I said, you know, we'll we'll look in and see what kind of dynamic he's going to bring to their team. Um, but only time will tell, and we'll have to wait for Saturday. All right, thank you, Brad. thank you. Thanks.